we're recording a history. And remember, life is not all roses and flowers. It's the good and the bad. Uh, and we're recording everything, just as you remember it. The retail uh, union, clerk's union, brought in these men, these goons, and they would ride the elevators with guns in their holsters. So I chained myself to the building. The press came, and um, the developers, contractors, called the police. It was a gathering point for pain and frustration, but also a hope that there could be this multiracial coalition of people. Here here is an audio documentary project in downtown La Crosse. The way that it works is uh, there's orange street level signs in the downtown with a 1-800 number on it. When you call that number, you hear a story of the exact space in which you stand. The other thing about here here is it's all first person narrative. It's something that happened to me or you in this particular space. This is where my life began in the United States. Uh, my family came here in 1987. The refugee camps and houses were built with wood and bamboos and stuff like that. And when we got here, there's like, you know, uh, electricity, there's like running cars, there's like buildings two, three stories tall. And, you know, it was pretty shocking to us. So often we talk about the founders of a town, we talk about the people who are prominent in a town, but this is about everybody's history. This is about the social history of, of the town and daily life. So it's important for us to think about ourselves as part of history so that we can not only think about history as, as in the past, but as something that we can affect and change. There was a lot of talk uh, about putting a road through the marsh. We were concerned with making this a much more livable, walkable, bike rideable city, along with saving the marsh, because we were so lucky as a city to have a marsh. We petitioned to have the referendum, we did the wording on it, and it brought about having the actual election and referendum. The vote to block the road was 11,951. The vote to have the road go through was 7,070. So it was a very profound vote to stop the road. We're meeting people from the community. Um, they're literally coming into our classroom and, and we're asking them questions and we're interacting with them. And we're reading the theory of race, of white privilege, and why historically have people come to a place of being historically underrepresented? What are the circumstances of the Hmong, the Ho-Chunk, African Americans? What has been the structure that has created the, the marginalization of these peoples? At the time, the late 90s, the Chamber of Commerce in La Crosse proposed $50,000 into a paint job on the Colossus, something that reinforces stereotypes about Native Americans. So that was my interest, that here it is in my hometown where I'm raising children that look like me. They're brown-skinned, they're dark-haired, we don't get mistaken for anything but Native American. And here's something in our hometown reinforcing harmful thinking about us. So I was compelled to do something. When you tell stories, you're telling them for a purpose. Those stories can create movement, they can create change. And so the projects like this have these legs that are like, you're going into the community, you're working with people within, within your college and within your university. You can think very creatively about the way that you a, teach the class and will partner with other people teaching similar classes. So I've partnered with Kate Hawks in the, in the art department, who's a, a photography professor. Her class took narrative photography. We taught two parallel classes. That became part of the website, which is wonderful. But then it also became a photography exhibit that travels. So there'll be a here, here photography exhibit at the La Crosse Airport that will draw people into the project as they come into our town. I was born on French Island in La Crosse. Stayed there until the airport was started by my dad. It was sold to, to La Crosse County. My recollection of the planes coming in and out was, was kind of exciting as a young kid. And at night when the planes would come in, my uh, mother, she would go out and flip a switch and turn on the lights. And the lights for the airport's landing strip were canning jars with light bulbs in them. So there's these ways that you interact with other people at the university, as well as extend out into the community, which is so interesting. So students 
are getting real world experience in these sorts of classes. It's crazy for them to be doing the sort of work that they're doing, right? They are creating something that has become a national award-winning project. While they're also uh, writing term papers and exams and all the things that they do, they're creating this thing that will affect and change the community. It represents basically the people of La Crosse. You got to find out where your role in this community, what you want to do here. It's really important for me to stand with other oppressed people and show them that we're offering the same support that they offer us. I really like this area and it could very well have been the kindness of that one guy. Mm -hmm.